So we can create some functions out of other functions by uh, adding those other functions, by subtracting those other functions, multiplying them or dividing them, even composing them together. So let's take a look at several examples of these combinations of functions. To start, we'll need something to combine. So let's suppose that f of x is equal to the linear function 2x minus 4 and g of x is equal to the rational function x plus 3 over x minus 2. Okay, Of course it might be helpful to know what the domain uh, is for each one of these functions. Uh, looking at this expression for f, is there any input that would cause a problem at all here that would make this undefined or non-real? Well no. So the domain of f is the set of all real numbers. Okay, so we indicate that with the double barred R. For g of x, are there any values of x that might make this undefined or possibly non-real if that's a worry for us? Well, we do have a division. If we divide it by a zero, that would be a problem. We would have an undefined expression. And of course, if x equals two, we have that zero in the denominator. So the domain of g is going to be the set of all x values uh, that are not equal to 2, right? So x is not equal to 2. And again, the domain is a set, uh, so we uh, indicate that by saying it's the set of all x such that, that's how that bar is read, uh, x is not equal to 2. Now, we said that we could combine these functions together uh, via several different operations. We could add them, subtract them, multiply them, divide them, or compose them. Let's look at the sum first. What happens when we add these two things? Well, we can create a new function called f plus g. And f plus g of x is going to equal, well, quite naturally, this guy plus this guy. So there's f. And there's g. Okay, If we want to know what the domain of this new function is, and in fact if we want to know the domain of any of the combination of functions that we're going to look at, here's the most important thing to consider. We want what the domain of this expression is before any simplifications get made. Okay, When you simplify an expression, sometimes you change its domain. For example, Here's a real simple function. h of x equals x over x. Certainly, x cannot be 0 here, otherwise you have an undefined expression. In fact, it's something in indeterminate form. But you have a 0 down here. You're dividing by 0. That's a bad thing. So the domain of this function as it's written is the set of all x such that x is not 0. However, we know that x divided by x for every other value of x simplifies down to 1. Okay, If our function was simply h of x equals 1, the domain here is all reals. There's no x that can cause a problem. So simplifying can sometimes change the domain. In fact, if we were going to simplify here, and simplification of course is a good thing, we just need to be careful and say this is only valid when x is not equal to 0. And it's undefined anyplace else, namely at x equals 0. Okay, So there's two pieces to that. So getting back to this function here where we're adding f and g, and I look at this and I haven't simplified anything yet, what's the domain? Well, the only thing that could go wrong is if I divided by 0, and of course I'm only going to divide by 0 if x equals 2, and so the domain here is again, the set of all x where x is not equal to 2. Okay. Likewise, if I wanted to look at the function f minus g of x, once again I very naturally just take the expression for f and the expression for g and subtract them. And there's not too much new going on here. If I still resist the urge to simplify things, possibly into a single rational expression. I can tell immediately what the domain is. I have a possibility for division by 0 here, just like I did here. And again, the domain is 
all x not equal to 2. Okay. What about the product of the two functions, fg? That's a function in its own right as well. fg of x is equal to, again, not surprisingly, this expression times this expression. 2x minus 4 times x plus 3 over x minus 2. Okay. Here again, the domain, don't simplify anything. Just look for the problems that occur as it's written. Here again, division by x minus 2 could be a problem if x equals 2. So we throw it out. There's no other values of x that could cause problems. We have the same domain as we did for the sum and the difference. Of course, if you do attempt to try to simplify this, you'll notice 2 uh, 2x minus 4 is just 2 times x minus 2. And you're multiplying by the fraction x plus 3 over x minus 2, you are going to be tempted to cancel those x minus 2s. If you do, you create a new function. It's very similar to the old function. In fact, it agrees with the old function everywhere except for what happens at 2. Right now, this is undefined when x is 2. But if you go that extra step and cancel those guys off, and get 2 times x plus 3, that you can find when x equals 2. Okay, so we have to be careful with that. Let's see, what about the quotient f over g, that function? Well, f over g of x, again, not surprisingly, is going to be the expression for f divided by the expression for g. So we have 2x minus 4 divided by x plus 3 over x minus 2. If you're interested in the domain of this function, answer that question right now before trying to simplify anything. Let's see how that works out. First off, as it's written, are there any problem values for x? Well, yeah, there's a division right here. We know x can't be 2 because otherwise this sub-expression would be undefined. Likewise, there's another division here going on. 2x minus 4 is being divided by this whole mess. So this whole mess cannot be 0. x plus 3 over x minus 2 cannot be 0. But if you have a fraction equal to 0, the numerator has to be 0 and the denominator has to not be 0. The only way the numerator is equal to 0 is if x is negative 3. So that tells me x cannot be negative 3 either. So the domain here, the domain of f over g, is the set of all x such that x is not equal to 2 or negative 3. Here again, look what happens if you try to simplify this. 2x minus 4 over 1, if you will, divided by this fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, multiplying by x minus 2 over x plus 3. Do you see now when we put these two things together that the only denominator you have is going to be x plus 3, and so x equals negative 3 is the only problem for this expression? Okay, so when you're finding the domain, find it before any simplifications at all. Let's see, what about composition? If we write f composed with g of x, remember how that's defined. What we mean by that is take x, apply g to it first to get some sort of output, and then use that output as input in f. So we take f of that result. So constructing this is a little different. We're going to put g of x in as our input to f. That's right here. So we're going to have 2 times whatever g of x is minus 4. Again, just taking the input and plugging it in for this occurrence of x. But g of x, remember, is all this. So we have 2 times x plus 3 over x minus 2 minus 4. Now, if we wanted to know what is the domain of this guy, don't simplify anything. Just ask yourself the question, what are the problem values of x here? We can't divide by 0. x, again, cannot be 2. There's our domain. 
What if we flipped it around? What if we looked at G composed with F? It's not always the same thing as F composed with G. Let's see, this would be G of F of X. We know what G does, namely this. So we can write this as F of X plus three over F of X minus two. And f of x in turn is this 2x minus 4. So we can write this as 2x minus 4 plus 3 over 2x minus 4 minus 2. Never hurts to put those parentheses in when you're making a substitution. That can often protect you from uh, missing a distributed sign or something else. Here that doesn't happen. Again, before you make any simplifications, what's the domain of this guy? Well, what could go wrong? We could divide by zero. So this thing down here at the bottom better not be zero. So we do a little scratch work. 2x minus 4 minus 2. Could that ever be zero? I bet it could. Let's see. Add 4 and add 2 to both sides. That's going to give you 6. And so x would be 3. So if x equals 3, we have a zero on the bottom, and that's bad. So we take our domain as the set of all x's that are not. 3. Okay, and that is it.